My internet's back up. I can read comics again. Yeah! Ah, crap. <clears throat> Not to be a complete and total downer uh, with what's coming up, but uh, Astonishing X-Men 7, Iron Fist 75, and Spirits of Vengeance 3 came out today. Strong recommend on each one of those. They were good. To the point where if I had a comic store in every, I'd spend actual money on them. But, instead, part, technically, part three, three of uh, Guggenheim's Who Cares About the Thing from the Negative Zone is up. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, Gug wants to write a story that doesn't actually involve the X-Men. Someone reminded him that uh, Marvel's the one publishing this story, and he's contractually obligated to include some of the characters in the book. Um, we've got Old Old Man Logan, uh, Petey, Kurt, uh, Kitty Pride, Storm, and the aptly named not really appearing in this comic. As well as some psychic dude who didn't make the cover, because, eh, second stringers. And there's someone else in there too whose name I can't remember. Yeah, part goddamn three. Yeah, an old, old man Logan. Check out that hairline. You know, it might be uh, time for a little road game there, Logan. Yep, there's some place called, I just don't care what the thing is called. It's some, some place where they do a forge designed tactical outfield, field outfit for the negative zone. When's the last time you saw a forge in a comic book? I can't remember the last time I saw a forge. We could use some forge right now. Nope. Got a page here. Wolvie's all mad. He's got to wear a costume. Well, sorry. Not Wolvie is mad. He's got to wear a costume. This is have universal translators that might be useful. That'd be nice to wear. Oh, but these aliens speak a dialect the translator can't process. Slight problem. Dialect? Dialect is a subset of a language spoken by a region or culture. If you can't understand the actual language, you would never understand the dialect of that language. So, yeah, well, the kind of thing an editor would speak, catch, right? Now, those of you who aren't completely lost here, so dialects are things like in in English, you have you have you have American English. You have British English, which is damn near indecipherable. Uh, Central Canada has got that typical Canadian accent, eh? And then out there in Newfoundland, by day, got all the kinds of weird things. And Newfie, uh, explaining Newfie actually kind of shoots my entire point in the foot here. But let's keep going. Uh, one problem at a time. This whole stretched up. Uh, translators, dialect. One problem at a time. Dip that up. You can have a whole other half a page on here. Pacing it for the trade paperback. No one's buying your trade paperback, Mike. It's not a goddamn for You might. Your mom might buy you a couple copies. You're not getting one. Meanwhile, in the negative zone, Kitty's held up by some stuff to prevent her from phantasming phasing creepwad. That's, that's a legitimate explanation thing, because they might not have a word that means that. It was not my intention to take prisoners. You and your friends were victim of circumstance. So kick him out. Uh, excuse me, we're leaving. We'd like you to leave the ship, please. Please disembark now. The uh, the white zone is for the immediate loading and unloading of partners. Nope. Drag him with us, because we can't tell Mark's shitty story about a stupid rebellion on a planet nobody cares about, unless there's an X-Men there. Kurt is stuck in some place he doesn't know where anything is, which is actually a legit trap for Kurt. He doesn't know where to go. He can't teleport out and he's in danger. So, yeah, <laughs> Could have been half a page. We're already uh, could have stayed about two pages worth of time here. Everyone pause. Oh, there's a spot I skipped over. Um, Rachel Summers is, is too hurt to go anywhere, so she's stuck in a hospital bed. But it means nothing for the rest of the story, so they didn't even need to have it. They all piled into the ship that you saw in the beginning, and uh, 
Apparently, you know, there's no windows. We should make planet fall in five, four, thum. I wasn't reading it right. You couldn't, you couldn't include a window in your gizmo to the negative zone? Although it does set up the fact that nobody in this series knows how to park. You crashed into another thing, but civilians and stuff. And just like that, the X-Men are stuck between the good guy Air Force and the bad guy villains with... With... Hang on, is that... That's a gun. They've had guns the whole time? Your, your civilization is on the precipice of disaster, and you couldn't shoot the guys with butcher knives, and now they've got guns? You have fighter jets that can kachoom kachoom and crack thum, and your civilization is on the precipice of collapse. This and your tradition of infanticide means that I don't care if your society falls apart completely. Chances are they're going to be slightly better than you morons. Uh, take to the skies. Let's deploy the Russian. Thankfully, uh, they fly in such tight formation that PD can crash through to land on one and immediately find the guy. Cease, we have no quarrel with you. You speak English? A command of... If I could remember the line from Star Wars, I'd use it. The kind of blah tongues. You have a combat zone. You don't say. You have a combat zone. You guys have stuff that flies. You have guns. You shouldn't be in a combat zone by now. You should be bulldozing cultists into trenches. And writing this off as some rebellion that failed. So they get invited back. Confab. He is Colgate. Uh, a base criminal grown to be would-be dictator because you guys didn't shoot him off the start. You shot him. No, we resisted and cast him out to Earth. Just shot him. Rebellion over. Shoot him. Hang him up somewhere. Dead. Done. No more civil war. Our world teeters on the brink. Good. Such bravado, but... Colgate has gone to ground. Strikes us from secret. We know not where. You are a spacefaring civilization. You obviously have some sort of orbital communications. You have laser guns. You couldn't track where a billion butcher knives came from. You deserve to die. Meanwhile, in the uh, place where the bad guys are, Temple of Scythian. If you kept a few of these guys, uh, well, pff, I can't say. If they captured a bunch of the guys, they could have questioned them and said where they came from. This would have been done by now. Nope. Can't do that. <sighs> Our forces engaged the enemy in the Southern District this afternoon. The outcome. Defeat. They've already killed themselves in penance. It's nice to see that your army is more willing to kill themselves in the face of failure than to learn from said failure. However, Mark Gug is stuck in the middle of the just just got done mojo worldwide, and we're stuck in the middle of another story involving characters nobody cares about. So there's your lesson in learning from failure. The Earthers were here. They come for their friends. Inconvenient. We can risk nothing at this stage. We can risk nothing. Except it's perfectly okay if our forces kill themselves in failure. I'm not sure you understand the concept of risk or reward, but uh, having your guys ex kill themselves in failure doesn't mean you're really looking for a lot of reward. Make contact with the Earthers. We'll gladly return their comrades. You could just kick them out of the ship to start with. Could have avoided all of this. They never would have showed up. Nope, we've got to have them otherwise. Doug can't tell this shitty story. And Kurt decides, you know what, I'm stuck. That's it. I'm stupid. I'm getting out of here. And, oops, <laughs> a drastic miscalculation. Now, we know that Kurt can't actually die. This is bad. It's really bad. Uh, um, I'll bet you... Oh, not my whole stack of Canadian tire money. Tell you what, I'll bet you... Uh, I will bet you a bit of Canadian tire money that this big screeny gets uh, the attention of whatever the faceless Mentat, baldy dude, Mentat they brought along with them. I'll bet you he figures where they are and they're going to go in and attack. And there'll be some big fight against the Colgate and his crew. And 
we'll be looking at a part four. Probably. Because we it, you, you can't put three issues into a trade paperback. It's got to be like four, right? As always, this has been an episode of The Great Canadian Neckbeard. Something you'd like me to rant and yell about, let me know. I'll always go for suggestions. And I will see you guys later.